I, I let me be very clear. I think what Russia is doing in Ukraine is no different to what the United States did in Iraq. Mm. It's an illegal war of aggression. There should be a cost and a price to pay for, and it should be stopped. However, I'm not so sold on the idea that sanctions is going to be some sort of a miracle thing that works that will work this thing out because uh, the literature is quite clear in this. Sanctions actually is an escalatory step that tends to increase the likelihood of war. Right. You enter into that cycle thinking perhaps that this is an alternative to war, <laughs> but statistically it actually increases the likelihood that you will be in war. One. Two, your likelihood of lifting those sanctions are very, very small. Right. And you end up having long-term sanctions that destroy countries and societies. So, you know, and particularly with these sanctions, it's not entirely clear what the Russians would have to do in order to get them lifted. That's one of the main problems. Yeah. That's one of the exactly. main problems. And the Russians, I, at least Putin, I'm certain, does not believe that these will be lifted anyway. So it's actually not incentivizing him right. to shift gear anyways because he doesn't believe that they will be lifted. And the Iran case is actually a really, really horrible example in that, in the sense that there, the United States actually did lift the sanctions, tried to lift sanctions, but the lingering effect of the sanctions were such that businesses were still not going into Iran wow. because they were afraid that the U.S. That would do back. exactly what Trump did. Oh, my goodness. Now, so you tell me how long, do you, even if sanctions are lifted, it's going to take a while before international businesses and investors go back into Russia because of, A, fearing that this conflict is not solved in a, uh, in a stable way. And secondly, you know, um, if if we can just grab other countries' assets the way we're doing right now, it's also going to increase the likelihood that people are not going to want to have their assets in various places. That's an argument, mm -hmm. too, and you should comment on this, too. It seems like an argument of against um, the dollar as the world reserve currency, because if you keep country after country, you know, you decide we're basically going to cut you off from the global finance system when you do something that we don't like, even if it's genuinely condemnable. That's when you start to think maybe you get some rumblings between Russia and China and perhaps India and some others where they're Iran, where they're like, maybe we should have a different world reserve currency because these guys are being a little too strict with it. And it's and yeah. then you start to wonder as because as soon as the U.S. is no as soon as the dollar is no longer the world reserve currency, that is game set match on the, the yeah, empire it's, for it's, sure. It's, yeah. And, and you're already seeing it. Uh, the Russians developed their own SWIFT system years ago. Mm -hmm. The Chinese have as well. They're talking about connecting it. More and more countries are going to be trading in non-dollars because um, if we can just go and sanction central banks and grab their assets, mm -hmm. um, uh, and those would be usually in dollars, and that's going to be an additional risk that they will have to take into account. So I think what we're seeing is... is um, a confusion of priorities here uh, and, and a confusion of also what will the cost of this be? Because people are talking a lot about the energy prices going up and certainly they have and mm -hmm. they will continue to go up if this crisis continues. What we have talked less about is cost of food. Right. I mean, Ukraine is a massive food producer. It's actually providing grain for almost the entire Middle East. Russia is, I think, the third largest food producer. A lot of that is going to stop now and we're going to start seeing, forget about people being ticked off having to pay $2 extra the gallon when they're uh, uh, pumping gas into their cars. Price of cornflakes may double as wow. a result of this. What's going to happen then politically here as well as in Europe? Did we think this through of, you know, how do we avoid this so that this actually doesn't push us into a global recession? Again, not an argument that there shouldn't be a consequence for a country uh, illegally invading another and doing what Russia is doing right now. I, I certainly believe there should be. But um, there were opportunities, in my view, that were not exhausted in preventing this altogether. And secondly, once we're down this path, how do we deal with some of these other consequences? Right. That we are just inescapable. We have to think it through. It's not necessarily an argument not to do so. But did we think this through? Do we have a plan on how to deal with this? Right. And that's what we've been reflecting a lot on is that there's this sort of frenzy so things that seemed unthinkable just a few weeks ago are now just, they're done. I mean, mm. it was considered the most extreme fringe to mm. kick them out of the SWIFT banking system just mm. a couple of weeks ago. And now that's done and we've gone so much further than that. And the other piece of this is, you know, to your, you're laying out the sort of tactical strategic case. 
that the sanctions aren't going to deliver what you ultimately want them to. And in fact, you are probably making it more likely that we enter into a broader war. But there's also the moral case, which is, Mm. you know, the Russian people, this isn't their fault. They didn't, you know, they didn't want this. There's Russians that are bravely protesting in the street right now against the war. And this is going to be, of course, nothing like what the Ukrainians are suffering, but this is going to be very devastating for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you cannot, on the one hand, say that Putin is a dictator that only listens to six people and then sanction millions of Russians that you have said have no No say say. in this. Mm -hmm. Right. It is collective punishment.